Ooby doo, it's everyone's favorite boomer and vintage lens enthusiast. Today we're going to look again at the Rebel T1i Canon zoom lens EFS 15-85mm 3.5-5.6 to image stabilization uh, ultrasonic motor. Uh, this camera came out in 2009, it's 15 megapixels. I paid full retail price for it. I think I got $100 off instant rebate, but uh, I try not to do that anymore. But uh, we're going to discuss this. Here's the initial screen you get. This button here, see there's a red dot there. If you press that, it pretends it's a, a, a mirrorless camera. I'm too close for this lens, but I just want to show you that it, here's the lens cap. I could take a picture of it. If I push the button, let's see what happens. So what happens is uh, the mirror dropped down, it blinked the, the chip, then it took a picture, and then of course the mirror flops up, but then it goes back into the mirrorless mode. And it's good if you got a long telephoto, if you're using uh, a wide angle and you're going to do some tabletop macro work, then it works really good. Uh, but it's a still a really a decent uh, DSLR. It has excellent battery life. It does take movies. It has a 640 by 480 mode, a 720 mode, and it has a 1080 mode. The 1080 mode is useless unless you have it plugged into uh, an external power source. Although it will shoot 720, but you'll have to take like five batteries with you. And even if the batteries are quote unquote dead, if you're done taking videos, you can put those batteries back in and you could do regular DSLR shooting. So that's a plus. You know, as a DLSR, it's very efficient, but in the movie mode, it's uh, uh, adequate. Of course, 40, uh, 640 by 480 mode, it'll shoot videos all day, but it's 640 by 480. 720 is a decent mode, but it's still 720. And 1080 is good, but it's a battery hog. Uh, but coupled with this lens, it's fantastic. Uh, I got the, the shingle shot because I'm a boomer. And uh, it's a two-dose shot. You get a shot and you get it uh, two months later, you get another one. Well, I took this shot on a Friday at lunchtime. And by the time I went home at work, I was feeling a little dizzy. And I had to go to bed early. And that weekend, I was pretty wasted uh, from this shot. And I took Monday off because uh, I had some brain fog. And my job requires me to shuffle papers around and... Uh, move numbers from uh, uh, one form to another and some data entry and all this good stuff. And I said, well, I, I can't go to work. I'll just screw things up. But it was a pretty decent Monday and I uh, wasn't sick enough that I had to stay in bed. So I took this camera and went to the park at eight o'clock when it opened up. And this was um, the week before, the Monday before Thanksgiving. And it was, uh, we had some wet weather and it dried out and it got cold and I went to the park and it was around 25 degrees and uh, this one section of the park had a creek it was overgrown with brambles and stuff and all the brambles had hoar frost on it and I took a bunch of pictures with this camera of the hoar frost and it came out so good that I decided I'm going to make a short video uh, just to show you how great this camera is and the reason I'm doing this is because I went out and I bought a uh, uh, a Nikkor uh, Zoom G lens uh, 24 to 85 and I shot some same pictures uh, similar pictures on uh, the Nikon uh, Z50 and I'm gonna make a little movie about that and you can see the difference so but that's another story we're gonna concentrate on this so this is an outstanding uh, system now this body you could get for a hundred bucks, an excellent like new condition. This lens, this is still an expensive lens. It's gonna cost you like two, maybe three hundred bucks to get this. This is an expensive lens, but even new, they're even more expensive. That's scary. So I bought this lens used. I'm very happy with it. Very happy with it. Excellent picture taker. Oh, long lens cap. <laughs> so uh, this goes with that. Uh, so I could highly recommend this system. Canon T1i takes great pictures. It's an excellent DLSR. 
it has this uh, quote unquote mirrorless mode where you could go live although it's hard to hold it it's a pretty massive camera and to hold it steady uh, you know it, it, it's a, a bit of a stretch uh, but you can do it um, but like I said it's for specialized photography if you're using a telephone lens you can take pictures of the moon or city skyline you're on a tripod you're gonna go super wide angle uh, you're going to do macro, then uh, having a screen like this for composition and focusing helps. You can actually focus on the screen and get really good results. You know, when it's, uh, the autofocus is questionable, you, you could see uh, without, uh, um, and it has a zoom feature too. You could zoom up on a 10x to a fine focus and it works really good. That's how good that screen is. So, um, what else can you say about this camera? It's got the usual Canon look to it. It has a rudimentary menu, but it does have some uh, features you can adjust. And it has good high ISO uh, rendition, I have to say that. And you can shoot 800 ISO all day, and it wouldn't look like anything out of the ordinary. So I highly recommend this. If you could pick it up for 100 bucks, you know, with the battery, and the batteries are still available, you can still get Canon batteries for this, believe it or not. So that's a plus. So you get this, a battery and a charger, you're good to go. It takes SD cards, of course, and um, get one. They're really, really good. You know, for 100 bucks, you can't go wrong. And of course, uh, you're stuck with the Canon ecosystem of lenses, but Canon makes some really great lenses. Uh, this is 3.5 to 5.6, which means that it's more of a daylight lens. Of course, you can bump the ISO up uh, and get some maybe twilight shots or stick it on a tripod and then you could do longer exposures. But I mean for walking around lens and daylight and that means cloudy, uh, you know, overcast days, no problem with the system. But I want to show you these Horfrost pictures and uh, keep these in mind because there is upcoming uh, the, the Nikkor G zoom of 24 to 85 millimeters and we're going to check that out and see how that does, huh? And there's a big surprise with that. Now, it's interesting that this is out of the box. I slapped this lens on this camera, and autofocus worked really great. I was really happy with it. But then, when I stuck this uh, G lens on a Z50, of course, I had to use the FTZ amount, uh, adapter mount. Uh, well, uh, luckily, I was wondering, gee, why do... Uh, 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 Nikon Z cameras have a, a fine tune autofocus uh, because you gotta, that's why. So uh, it's got that going for it or against it. But anyway, let's uh, jump right into pictures and check this out. So uh, I'm a boomer, I'm everyone's favorite boomer, and uh, I thought I should get the shingles vaccine. What a mistake that turned out to be. It's a two part uh, vaccine now. You get one, you wait two months or something, and you get another shot. Well, the first shot threw me for a loop, and I couldn't go to work that day because I had this terrible brain fog. But I figured I could still go take a walk in the park uh, because of, I was using the automatic camera was doing everything for me. All I had to do was point and shoot. So what you know it, it was a uh, horror frost day at the park, and I got a lot of great pictures, and I'm sharing it with you. And the Canon T1i, and a Canon zoom lens of 15 85 millimeter is a really fantastic combination. And it was cold, it was like 25 degrees. I didn't have any troubles at all, as far as I know. In fact, my hands hurt a little bit, it was so cold. Uh, but I still I managed to get some really great pictures. I'm showing them with you. Um, how I came by the Canon T1i is I bought a brand new from New York City with like $100 instant rebate. So I think it cost me uh, $69.99 or something like that. Well, I learned my lesson. I bought the lens from a, a used camera gear place in Smyrna, Georgia. I don't have to say their name, do I? And uh, what an excellent combination. Excellent combination. It does seem to have some chromatic aberration. I know some uh, magenta fringing, fringing a little bit, but you really, really got to look for it. <clears throat> so um, it had fine detail, which I liked. I shoot at f11. It should have fine detail at f11, shouldn't it? I was shooting into the sun, and there's only one picture where I had a, a green uh, sun blob uh, out of all the pictures I took shooting into the sun. I did try to stand behind a tree and shade it, but still, it's very flare resistant. And at f11, 
Uh, of course, you have to use a fast shutter speed, like with 250th of a second or more, although I did use some slower shutter speeds. Uh, ISO 400, I was still getting some really, really great shots. Hard frost. Well, what happens is there's a creek in back of this uh, area. You can see there's a lake there a little bit, but the creek was in back of me here. And what happened was the air was clear, cold, and still. And as the temperature dropped, I guess the um, uh, the relative humidity of the air dropped too, and it, it deposited all these crystals all over everything. Uh, so it was a cool combination. This is the thing. You could get a Canon T1i in excellent condition for 100 bucks right now. So instead of buying one in 2009 for 700 bucks, you could get them today $800 as an excellent camera. Now, as I pointed out before, it's sort of like a, a mirrorless hybrid. That if you're in movie mode, it goes in mirrorless mode, and you can take all the movies you want because it's mirrorless until your battery drops dead. Uh, when you go to take a picture, um, uh, the shutter closes, the mirror drops, it clears the chip, the mirror pops up, and then the shutter opens and closes, and you take a picture, which I think is pretty goofy, but, you know, hey, what can you say? Now, um, I didn't do it because I didn't have to, but uh, you can focus on the rear LCD screen. It's that fine that you could focus on it, which amazed me also. Uh, but for a 15 85 millimeter, there is, there is no need for it at all, none at all. So uh, I was just so pleased with the way these pictures came out. Now, what's the downside to the Canon uh, EF ecosystem? Well, you're stuck with EF lenses. Canon makes a whole bunch of lenses, and I highly could, I could highly recommend them because this is a Canon lens. But don't buy them new, buy them used. Just find one in excellent condition and go for it. Uh, you could save a ton of money if you buy used. Now, of course, Canon, uh, the T1i, there's a whole bunch of generations after that. I think this is a direct T8i right now. Some lady at work got one as a gift from her kids, and she said it cost 800 bucks. Well, you know, I learned my lesson. I got the T3i, I bought that for $300, but they held their value so well for a long time that at, when I bought that, it was a good price. It was a really good price. And then I have the SL2. I brought the SL2 because it does uh, uh, time-lapse photography. It makes its own movie in the camera. And uh, they were dirt cheap. They were like $4.99 brand new. Uh, that's the body only. But I didn't care. You have a bunch of lenses. You don't care. I imagine they're even uh, cheaper now on the used market. So uh, like I say over and over again, never, ever buy anything new. Always buy used. Uh, and look at the results I got. The proof is in the pudding. I could talk about it from here until doomsday. But if you look at the pictures, the bright, sharp, vibrant, uh, freedom of aberration. And uh, you can't do any better. I went back with my Z50 because I bought a Canon, uh, I bought a Nikon uh, 24 to 85 millimeter. Uh, and that does have, there's a whole class of lenses that will work with the Z cameras. If it has a, a, a manual on off switch, then generally they'll work with that camera as a rule. Um, the later D lenses and of course the G lenses. Now every Canon lens they make is a G lens, which means gelded, which means they got rid of the, uh, uh, the aperture ring. You have to control the camera from the cam, have to control the lens from the camera, which is no big deal really. I went from F9 to F11. That was my big uh, change, you know. Uh, if you're noticing, a lot of these are wonder one crops, where I took a 15 megapixel full frame picture, and I, I, I made a mask that's a 1920 by 1080, which is one to one crop on the screen, and then check it out. They're sharp. Most of them were center, of course, but um, I did notice some softness in the corners and a little bit of chromatic aberration. There's a, a sun blob, a green sun blob, but that's the only time I got a sun blob where I was actually shooting into the sun. Uh, I didn't use the um, lens hood with it. These modern lenses have such uh, excellent coatings that you really don't need a lens hood. But on older vintage lenses, they definitely help because you know, they only had one coating or uh, maybe their coatings are uh, uh, shall we say, obsolete technology, or what may have you. Without a doubt, this is the best. 
Now, uh, real briefly, uh, I did a full frame crop of the 15 megapixel. I shrunk it down to fit the screen. And then uh, I went and I made a, a, a magnified mask, a one-to-one -one mask. But sometimes I did. Generally, Bs are one-to-one, -one, but not all the time. But if it's a one-to-one, -one, then you know it's definitely uh, uh, the most you can magnify it on this screen. And it was just a beautiful day. In fact, I was glad I, I, I got the vax because I had an excuse not to go to work. But I was messed up for like a week afterward. I had brain fog. I was lethargic and tired and all this stuff. But, you know, I had the shingles already, and it's horrible. So I guess if you're lethargic and uh, have brain fog, it's better than getting uh, shingles itself and having to deal with that. Uh, now they're talking about, since this is the end of 2023, in China they're talking about white lung which I think is funny. In America, we get black lung, but in China, they get white lung, which is some sort of weird pneumonia they get. I was thinking of getting a pneumonia shot, but there are two shots now. Supposedly, they're good for the rest of your life if you get the two shots, same thing with the shingles. Or I say, oh, should I get it? Am I going to get messed up? You know, some of these needles, they were like a three-eighths of an inch long, and they were poking out of everything. And they were uh, ice crystals. That's what they were. Everything was coated with ice crystals. It's really cool. I really liked it. It was like really neat walking around checking this out. You know, we live on the planet Earth, and when the conditions are just right, uh, you get vapor deposition of uh, ice crystals on uh, living things. I thought so. It was bizarre. And if I had went to work, I would have missed it. So, you know, sometimes weekends, the, the weather is not just cooperative of uh, taking good pictures. And uh, I just happen to uh, be there at the right time. Now, you could get some backscatter around the edges of these tufts of these plants, but because they had ice crystals, it was pronounced. And here's a close-up of one of, one of the, uh, uh, the plant stems. And here's a one-to-one -one of that. And you can see. Now, I rotated this just so I could, uh, uh, for compositional purposes, to, to put it in the screen. It was just so beautiful. And there was no one there. There were a couple of guys there, uh, mm -hmm. park workers who were cleaning, shutting up the uh, uh, the toilets, I guess, for the season. They put a lock on it so he can't use it. And that was it. I think I saw a guy walking his dog and nobody else. So I was pretty cool. I handheld this at an eighth of a second. I wanted to get some, uh, you know, water time lapse, long exposure water trails. Now, it's interesting. Uh, these are the remnants that are only going to be left and anything that's not in a park is going to be just uh, flattened and they're going to put up uh, condos and uh, piggly wigglies and uh, gas stations or charging stations or something. And uh, I don't know what to think, except that is progress uh, what we really want? I don't know. But I like the fact that there's no one there. I was the only person sick that day, so I went to work. I got some good pictures. I'm very happy. Excellent combination. The Canon T1i uh, DSLR 15 megapixel from 2009 and the uh, Canon zoom lens 15 to 85 millimeter EFS. And of course, the lens is still in production. You can still get that, which is great. And, uh, you know, it's this brilliant sunlight slapping you in your face. And uh, I just got some really excellent results. And these stone walls were made by ancient astronauts. Do you think people... Uh, did that themselves. People are stupid. All you have to do is walk down the street and see how stupid people are. Do you think they can make a, a wall like that? No, it's ancient astronauts. I stopped at a bank, which is uh, two towns away, and I went to the ATM, took some money out. There's these two oak trees there. I thought they were cool, so I took a picture. Then I have a flowering cherry tree in my front yard. I took a picture of this, and you can just barely make out the cell structure. 